live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 19. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE here live in San Francisco at Moscone South. We're on the floor at Google Next 2019, hashtag Google Next 19. I'm John Furrier, my co-host this week for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Google's Cloud Conference is with Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Guys, day one of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, we got the Thomas Curry and the new CEO on the job for 10 weeks. Took the realm from Diane Green, 35,000 attendees. It's packed, it's definitely a developer crowd. It feels a lot like AWS. Not a corporate show like Microsoft or IBM or others, or Oracle. It's really more about developers. Uh, we just heard the keynote. Google's making some moves. The new CEO's got to put on a show. He's talking to customers. He's seeing the positioning. Sundar Pakai, the CEO of Google, came out. Really, kind of a interesting keynote. Feels like Thomas has got, still got to shake that Oracle off, but he's guns blaring. Some new announcements. Guys, let's, let's do a, a roundup on the keynote. Stu. Yeah, so John, uh, as you said, great energy here. This place is bustling. Be, sitting here where we are, we can see everybody's going through the expo hall. As you said, is Google serious about this? This whole cloud activity? Absolutely, there's no better way than to have your CEO up there. We go to the Amazon show, you don't see Jeff Bezos there. Been to the Microsoft shows, you know, you, you don't usually see uh, you know, their CEO there. You have the cloud group does the cloud thing, but absolutely cloud is a critical piece of what Google is doing. And it's interesting because I actually didn't feel as geeky and as developer focused as I would expect to see at a Google show. Uh, maybe they've heard that feedback for years that you know, Google makes great stuff, but they're too smart and they're too geeky. When you go to the Amazon show, they're announcing all of the different you know, compute and storage pieces and everybody's hooting and hollering. Um, here, it was a little bit more business. It was high level. They had all of these partners out on stage and customers out on stage. Many of them, you know, you talk about retail and healthcare and all these other ones where you say, oh, okay, Amazon's a major competitor there. So, you know, can Google stake their claim as to how they're going to move up from the number three position and gain more market share, you know, as they fit into the multi-cloud, which I know we're going to spend a lot of time on, where's their position uh, in, in this cloud space today? Dave, what's your thoughts? Well, first of all, this is a big show. I mean, it's, we were here at IBM Think in February. This feels like a much, much larger e event, number one. And as Stu said, it's really much more developer heavy. I think, John, there's no question, people don't question Google's global cloud presence. Sundar talked about 200 countries, uh, 90 cloud regions, 58 plus two new data centers, so no question there. But there are questions as to whether or not Google can move beyond search and maps and Gmail and really be a big cloud player for enterprise cloud. That really is the, the elephant in the room. Can Google innovate and attract CIOs? They showed a number of customers, not nearly, of course, as many as what Amazon or even Microsoft would show. Um, they're, they're talking about an ecosystem. To me, that ecosystem slide, it's got a quadruple this year to really show some progress, but you've got new leadership. As we talked about last year, John, and love, love to get your thoughts on this, Google's playing the long game, yeah. they got the best tech, um, and you know, they've got great data, great AI. I want to dig into the new rebranding of the Google Cloud Platform, which is now called Anthos, <laughs> which is Greek word for flower. Um, we kind of had um, visibility into this, we kind of saw it coming, but uh, before we get into that, I want to just kind of point out something that we've reported on SiliconANGLE, something that we've been saying on Twitter, um, and, and about Diane Green. It's been reported that she was fired from Google for missing on uh, Red Hat, all these rumors. But interesting, Thomas Curian's first words as CEO on stage was a direct shout out to Diane Green. And I think this validates our reporting and our analysis that Diane Green absolutely helped hire Curry and worked with the board, worked with Sundar, and essentially because she was the architect of rebuilding Google Cloud's enterprise chops. The team there that she recruited, we've been following and covering. Diane Green built that foundation. She passed the torch to Thomas Curry, and this was not a Diane Green firing. So I think, I think Thomas Curry, a nice gesture on Diane Green, kind of sets the table and validates and preserves her legacy as the rebuilder, re-architect of Google Cloud. Um, pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, I think there's, where there's some smoke, there's fire. I don't think Diane got quote unquote fired. I think, you know, she was under a lot of pressure. She was here for seven years. I think they probably felt like, okay, 
Now it's time to really bring somebody in who wants to take this to the next level, and I don't think Diane necessarily had the stomach for that. Yeah, but John, she, John, really great points there, but it does talk about, you know, what is the culture of Google? You know, the elephant in the room is, what is Google? Google makes, you know, most of their money on advertising. That's not what Google Cloud is. It doesn't fit into the traditional model. You know, Google's culture is not geared for the enterprise. Uh, you know, the, the critique on Google for years has been, we make really great stuff and you need to be Googly and you need to do things the way we do. Thomas Kurian's out there, we need to meet customers where they are today. That's very much what we hear in the enterprise. Uh, that, that's what you hear, you know, when you talk about Amazon or Microsoft, they're listening to their customers, they're meeting them at their business applications. They're helping them build new environments. So, you know, will Google be a little less Googly uh, and therefore, you know, meet customers and help work them? And that leads to the multi-cloud and the Anthos uh, discussion. Yeah. Well, we heard a lot about that today. I mean, John, you pointed out many, many times that Kubernetes is the linchpin to Google strategy. It's really, you know, the, it was kind of like a Hail Mary relative to AWS, and that's what we heard today. Multi-cloud, 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 whereas with AWS and certainly to a lesser extent Oracle, it's unicloud. Multi-cloud is more expensive is what they tell us. Multi-cloud is less secure. Multi-cloud is more complex. Google's messaging is exactly the opposite of that. Uh, so Dave, just to poke at that a little bit, it's great to see Sanjay Poonin up on stage with VMware, but where'd we last see VMware at a cloud show? It's at Amazon, they've got a deep partnership here. Kubernetes is not a differentiator for Google. Everybody's doing it. Even Amazon is being you know, forced to be involved in it. Cisco is up on stage. Cisco's got a deep partnership with Amazon and AKS, so you know, Kubernetes is not a magic layer, as Joe Beta said on theCUBE at, at KubeCon. It is something that, you know, Google, that management layer and how I live in a multi-cloud environment, yes, Google might be further along with multi-cloud messaging than, say, Amazon is, but, you know, Amazon's the, 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 the leader in this space, and everybody that has multiple clouds, Amazon's one of them, even well, in the keynote this morning, the operative word there is forced, AWS. right? AWS forced <laughs> into Kubernetes. You're not seeing AWS run demos that show you know, a target of the Google Cloud or the Microsoft Cloud. You saw that today from Google. Well, we've seen, Amazon, we've seen Amazon do demos with Oracle, but that's the reason. Let's, let's hold off on the parties for a second. Let's go through the keynote. So the Diane Green comment, also Al came out who runs VP of Engineering. He's the architect behind this Anthos product. Last year they announced on GCP, it's basically a hybrid solution, GA, general availability of Anthos, which has security built in out of the box, multi-cloud security integrated for uh, continuous integration, continuous development, CI, CD pipelining, um, very key news. And that was really interesting. This is essentially their new platform that they've rebranded called Anthos. Um, this is a way for them to essentially start posturing from just hybrid to multi-cloud. This is the shift of, of Google. They want to be the on-premise cloud solution and on any cloud, your thoughts, well, guys. Well, the, the, you know, the demo said it all, the ability to take VMs and move them into containers and move them anywhere, right once and, and, and move anywhere. And that, I think, is, is the key differentiator right now relative to certainly AWS, lesser extent Microsoft, IBM right there with Red Hat. That's, to me, the interesting angle here. Yeah, look, Google has a strong history with containers. If you, if you scroll back to the early days of Docker, 2014, 2015, Google's out there as to how many, you know, that just the, so many containers that they're building up and tearing down. However, you go to the Microsoft show, you go to the Amazon show, we're starting to talk a lot more about serverless. We're going to have uh, the, 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 the product lead for serverless on today. I'm excited to dig into that because I'm a little bit concerned that Google is so deep in the containers and how Kubernetes is. They're looking for like K-native to connect the pieces, but that they are a little bit behind in some of the next generation architectures built on serverless I, I, for devs. I, I want to make a point here. If you're not a, the leader in cloud, which, yeah. you know, in, in enterprise cloud, which Google is not, uh, you know, IBM is not, or you know, Oracle is not, okay, fine, but if you don't have a cloud like Cisco or Dell or VMware, you have to go after multi-cloud. Amazon's not in any rush to go after multi-cloud. There's no reason down the road Amazon can't go after that opportunity to the extent that it's a real TAM, right? It's, there's a long way to go. Talk about early innings. Yeah, We're like, yeah. haven't even started the game of well, multi-cloud Outpost yet. hasn't even been spec'd out yet, so that has not been relieved. So we're seeing what, Amazon's got no, and they are the cloud, so they're the incumbent. Um, interesting enough, on Jennifer Lin, you mentioned the demo. Jennifer Lin, CUBE alumni, we're going to interview her later. She introduced An uh, An uh, Anthos Migrate. Kind of reminds me of some of the AWS shows where they have the migration tools. 
um, and that migrates workloads from VMwares into containers, running in containers, as you mentioned, Dave. This is an end-to-end, -end, no modified code changes. Yeah. That's a big deal. Well, yeah, um, John, exactly. On Twitter, people are going, is this the next vMotion? You know, those of us that have been in the industry a while remember how powerful that was to be able to seamlessly migrate. You know, VMs and containers, at, you know, I shouldn't have to think about how I'm building it, where it lives. That was the promise of PaaS for all those years, and absolutely things like Kubernetes, what Google's doing, chipping away at that. They're partnering with Cisco, they're partnering with Pivotal, partnering with lots of companies, uh, so that that portability of code uh, is a lot easier I mean, that's today. exactly what it is, a cloud vMotion. I mean, and we know what vMotion did in the enterprise. To me, that's the star of the, the keynote, is obviously the, the rebranding, is obviously a, a positioning thing, but the star of the show is the Jennifer Lynn demo, because if Anthos Migrate actually works, that's going to be a tell sign to me on how fast Google can take territory. Now, what's interesting also with uh, the announcements was, I want to get you guys' thoughts on this, because we cover ecosystems, we cover how cloud and enterprise have been partnering over the years. Enterprise is not that easy. Google has found out the hard way. Microsoft has done really well, they've had an install base. Google had to stand this up from the beginning. Again, Diane Green did a great job, but now it's hard, it's a hard nut to crack. So you see Cisco on stage. Cisco has huge enterprise cloud. VMware comes on stage. David Gettler, Gettler, EVP of engineering of Cisco, one of their top executives on stage. And then you had Sanjay Poonin, Cube alumni, came on. Sanjay had more time than Cisco. So you have two companies who kind of compete NSX with software-defined Cisco, both on stage. Cisco absolutely integrating into, and we covered it on siliconangle.com, just posted it live, where Google, uh, Cisco is actually laying down their container platform and integrating directly into Google's container platform to offer programmability end-to-end. -end. I think that is something that didn't get teased out on the keynote, Stu, because Great. this allows for um, Google to quickly move into the enterprise and offer true programmability of infrastructure. This is the nirvana of infrastructure as code. This is what DevOps has been waiting for. Stu, your thoughts on this, because this could yeah. be a game changer. Hyperflex so, and ACI, this could put pressure on VMware with the containers running in platform, and the Cisco relationship, your thoughts. Yeah, so, so John, Cisco has a broad portfolio when you talk about multi-cloud. It's not just the networking components, HCI is absolutely a piece, but that multi-cloud management uh, is a layer that Cisco has you know, been adding to and working on for, for a lot of years, and they've got very key partnerships. So making sure, you know, see, right, seeing David Geckler on stage here, proof, Cisco, a lot of enterprise customers. VMware, of course, 600,000 customers there. So, Google wants to get into these accounts. Uh, you look at you know, Microsoft's strength of their enterprise agreements that they have, so how will Google get into some of these big accounts, get into the procurement, uh, get into the environments, and there's lots of different methods, and the partnerships we said are critical. I think David Geckler undersold the opportunity here. I mean, when it comes to yeah, networking inter-cloud, Cisco is in the pole possession, the position to basically say, we got the best network, the highest performance networks, the most secure networks, and we're in a position to connect all these clouds, and to me, that didn't come out today. So, when you think about multi-cloud, each of these companies is coming at it from a, their position of strength. Cisco, very clearly dominant networking, VMware and virtualization, and I think that came through in Sanjay Poonin's you know, keynote. I think, again, Geckler undersold it, but, but it's a great opportunity for Cisco and Google. Well, I think Google has a huge opportunity with Cisco because if they have a go-to-market joint sales together, that could really catapult Google's sales. Again, I thought Geckler was kind of cocky, where's where Cisco, but Cisco, look, at VMware's on stage with them. I thought that was going to be a Hail Mary for, um, for um, Cisco to kind of have bring that back, but then watching Sanjay Poonin come on saying, hey, we're okay, it's going to be a VM world, and Pat Gelsinger has been on the record saying, Kubernetes is the dial tone of the internet, Stu. This is an interesting matchup between Cisco and VMware. Your thoughts? Yeah, so, so right, there's so many pieces here uh, as to where they play. Um, look, we, we know there's competitive competition and uh, you know, partnerships in a lot of these environments. Google actually has a long history of partnering. Uh, you know, I, I can't even think how many years ago uh, the, the Google and VMware partnership in Cisco. If I can actually, Dave, I, I, there, there's, there's something I know you've got a, a strong viewpoint on. You know, Thomas Kurian left Oracle, and it was before he had this job. Everybody says, you know, is TK going to come in here and bring, you know, Oracle's, you know, sales methodology into Google? You know, what does he bring? What's his skill set? Uh, and you know, what, what's exactly, the opportunity here? I think it's so. the opposite, right? I think that's why he left Oracle because he didn't want every database to run in the Oracle cloud. He realized there's a huge opportunity out there, and I think. The messaging that I heard today is, again, it's completely, I saw something on Twitter like, 
oh, this is just like Oracle. I'm like, it's nothing like Oracle. It's, yeah. the, it's the polar op opposite of what Oracle is doing. I think, I think Curry can really define his career. This could be a nice swan song for him as he takes Google, what Diane Green did, builds it out, does the right deals. If he can build an ecosystem and bring the tech chops in with a clear go-to-market, he's not going to be able to hire the salespeople and the SEs fast enough, in my opinion. That's going to be a really slow boat to, 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 to the, to the the promised land. He's got to do some deals. He's got to put some corp dev in place. He's got to make some acquisitions. Yeah. It's going to be very, and Sundar Pakai, the CEO said, we are investing heavily in cloud. If I'm Amazon, I'm worried about Google. I think they are a dark horse. They have a lot of, they have a clean sheet of paper. Microsoft, although has legacy install base, Google's got, I think, a lot more powder, if you will, Dave. What, one little side, and I agree with that, John. I think you're, you're absolutely right. The, the clean sheet of paper and the deep pockets, you know, and the long game and the great tech, uh, Amazon should be worried about Google. One little side note, and Stu, you and I talked about this. Did you hear uh, the, uh, Thomas ask Sanjay Poonin about Dell and Dell Technologies? And yeah. Sanjay, as an executive Dell, was talking about the whole Dell Technologies portfolio. I thought it was a very interesting nuance that we hadn't previously seen from VMware when they were owned by EMC. Well, Dave, you know, we see Dell and VMware are almost the same company these days. That they're working together, but yeah. John, as you said, I actually like that, you know, we didn't have some big announcement today on an acquisition. Thomas Kurian says he's got a big pocketbook, he's going to be acquisitive, and it'll be interesting to see, do they buy some company that has a big enterprise sales force? It can't just be old legacy sales trying to go into the cloud yeah. market, that won't work, um, but absolutely, a lot of opportunities for them to go out. Yeah. They, they didn't get GitHub, they didn't get Red Hat, so who will Google pick You guys up? are right on, man. Salesforce is still a big question mark, and how can they hire that fast? That's a And again, he's only been in the job for uh, 10 weeks. <laughs> I think he's going to get his sea legs. I think it's gonna, he's going to come in, he's going to ingratiate him with the culture, and it'll be a quick decision. I think the Google culture will accept or reject Thomas Kurian based upon his first you know, year in operations, he's going to have to get into the team. Yeah, and I think the Wall Street Journal kind of commented on this that will he bring that Oracle? I thought that was kind of a, not a fair assessment, but I think he's got the engineering chops to hang with Google. He kind of gets the enterprise market 100%. He's been there, done that. So I, you know, I think he's got a good shot. I think he, he can make the right moves. Yep. Of course, we're here making the moves on theCUBE here live for day one of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, and Stu Miniman here at Google Next in Moscone in San Francisco Live. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.